hey, I just want to come through and say thank you so much for watching the webinar uh, a couple of days ago. And uh, yes, while I, I was there looking at uh, some of the stuff that has come out uh, from your questions and comments and things like that, um, I had so many questions coming through. I had so many comments coming through. So I thought, you know what, rather than answer one by one, I might as well, you know, shoot a video so that you can uh, get to know exactly what uh, answers people are asking, I mean, what answers I'm giving to the individual people, because the question is, you know, uh, most of the questions coming out are, hey, coach, I don't have a niche, or, you know, I don't have the skills, or I'm not good enough, and, you know, they're the same questions over and over and over again, so I thought, you know what, how about we shoot a video on, hey, what do you need to do to start? By the way, you don't need to know your niche right now, okay? You can uh, start at any time, because 99% of the people who start the course do not actually have a niche all right they come in and then me and my team will work together and we get you to find to figure out what your niche is and you know what i know people you know like uh, jennifer sudesh kobas they took a while to figure out their niche so don't get uh, bogged down into it but i just thought you know what how about i shoot a video for you so that we can address the three biggest biggest questions coming through and that is number one if what happens if i don't have a niche number two how about if I don't have the skills? And then number three, if I'm not good enough, okay? And then, of course, a bigger picture of what we got to do. So we're going to go to the board right now, and let's get into this, okay? So most of the time, most of the questions I'm getting are, what do I need to do without a niche? Now, I have spoken about niche for a long time, and there is a misconception about what niche is about, okay? Niche is not necessarily uh, the, uh, about picking one topic and saying, this, this is all I'm going to do, or this is all. No. Actually, if you look at the history of the word niche, it comes from what they call niche marketing, meaning that you pick one specific message and you market it to a certain specific audience, all right? Now, that means that, uh, that doesn't mean that you cannot have your own thing to do. That doesn't mean that you cannot, you know, switch from one to the other to the other. No, the thing is, you got to know that the most important part for going forward on this one is you got to start. All right. So if you don't have a niche, these are some pointers that I want to give you so that you can appreciate that it is actually easy to do. Number one. Number two, you actually find it in the course because the first week of the course, the only thing we talk about is niche. The only things that we talk about are the foundations. Why? When you have a great foundation, then everything else becomes much, much easier. So when you say, okay, coach, I don't have a niche, I am going to tell you that these are the things I want you to think about, okay? There's no point of ever starting the business of consulting and or the business of uh, coaching and mentoring others if you don't pick a certain group of people that you want to serve. That is so crucial for two reasons. Number one, where focus goes, energy goes. Where energy goes, you get results, okay? Number two, have you ever seen somebody who chases two rabbits? They end up catching none. So I want to give you some pointers today so that you can say, okay, actually the problem is I don't have, it is not that I don't have a niche. The problem is I just need to focus. I just need to get my energies together so that I can begin to build my business the way that I want it to be. So first things first, I want you to completely pick a topic Claim it and master your topic. That is where it all starts. Like all great buildings, like all great businesses, the foundation is so, so important. Let us get that out of the way. Think of a topic and say, okay, this is what I'm going to do. And then say, I'm going to claim it and I'm going to master it. Why? That will put you in a different, it will put you in a position where you can serve your clients better. And in serving the clients better, that is where you make the money. That is where you get recognized as the person who is the champion of that niche. So choose a topic that you, okay, number one, are going to be fascinated by it for the long term. If it, it should fascinate you right now, but it's also something that fascinates you a lot going forward. Why? You want to pick something that, you know, regardless of, of what is going on in, in your life, regardless of what you know, regardless of where you are, you are fascinated about this, okay? You're reading about it. You've looked at, you know, you're, you're always uh, buying books about it. It fascinates you. In fascinating you, that means that you're consistently going to be learning and growing in that particular niche, okay? Question number two is, I need you to ask yourself, uh, what is that one thing, one topic that I really love? I love it. I love to do it. And the best way you can know is go and look at your library. Look at uh, your, your browsing history. Look at, you know, uh, what are those things that you've written about in your journal, if you journal, things like that. You will find that there are certain things that you love to do. So whatever topic you choose, make sure that one, it fascinates you. Two, you love to do it. Number three, you might want to choose a topic 
based on something you've gone through in life. Maybe it is, uh, you know, uh, something you went through. You, you got a job and, or, or you got a job and you, you were able to, to turn it around and do something amazing. Or, you know, something wrong happened to you. Or you went through, you know, uh, a weight loss. Or you went through a certain disease. Or you went through a divorce. Whatever it is, that could be where you say, you know what? Because I went through it. I know it. I have the information. Therefore, I can go and serve other people with it. Okay? So, something that you are gone through that you have gone through and then the next part is something that you love to learn about something that you love to learn about why the you know consulting is about four things all right the basics number one pick a niche number two find out uh what their biggest problems are okay and or biggest desires number three find a solution for those problems and or desires number four get paid now you only get paid if you are solving a big problem and if you solve the problem uh, better than anybody else, you are going to be the kind of person who attracts the right clients to you. Now, for you to be able to, uh, to, to solve the problem perfectly, for you to be able to be the person that everybody in that niche goes to, you must pick something that you love to learn about. Why? That will make sure that you're consistently finding the best solution for your clients, all right? So, it must be something that you love to learn about. And then finally, finally, and this is a big one, you must pick a topic that you are willing to commit to learning about, talking about, dreaming about, working, working on for the next five years, okay? And this is where most people go wrong. This is where most people fail. You must have something that you are willing to talk about in the next five years. You eat it, you dream it, whatever. That is the only way you get mastery. And it is only at mastery level that you begin to make the, uh, the amount of money and attract the, the kind of uh, clients who are going to pay you big time. So you must pick something that you're willing to do for the next five years. And this is the kind of commitment that it takes. It's not about uh, do not uh, get into the solution. Oh, I can you know jump from one to that. No. Pick something and say, I'm going to commit to it for the next five years, okay? And magic begins to happen because then you go from just knowing about it, loving it, to mastering it, and then being able to help other people to achieve in that, in that particular niche. So, make sure that you are willing to do the next five years for it, okay? And in answering these questions, you will pick a niche and then you will master that topic and you begin to be the to-go-to person when it comes to that, all right? So, this is how you pick your niche. All right, and just to, to, to just demonstrate, and most of you have seen this in the webinar, I've spoken about it, and we go a little bit deeper in the course where we help you to, to what? To really zero in and say, you know what? I really want to master this, okay? Now, the certain things that um, in this uh, diagram that I might want to demonstrate to you, all right? So, one of the things um, uh, that uh, I'm usually asked, okay, coach, uh, if you were to, to summarize it, what would you do, okay? I would say, okay, number one, I want you to go and... Ask yourself, what industries do I know or love? What industries really, you know, are in my blood? Maybe the places that you, 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 are, you, know, you, you grew up around a bakery or you grew up on a farm or you grew up with a dentist, uncle, whatever. Ask yourself, what industries do I love? Okay. And then the next thing is, what does the market desire or want? And this right here is the most important part of you deciding what your niche is. This right here. You must go and ask yourself, what does the market want and desire? Because without this, without this, it becomes super, super difficult for you to come up with a niche that is going to be lucrative for you. All right? And this is where most people go wrong. They, they say, oh, I'm going to start a consultancy. And they go sit down. They don't think about what the market wants. And they come up with something and then they wonder why the phone is not ringing. It's because you didn't ask what the market wants. You know, I've always told guys, if you go to a place where they eat cuts, you know, as, a, as, as barbecue, okay, and then you go in there and you cut groomer, hello, there's no business there for you. Why? The market does not desire your particular service, okay? And then, of course, here we have what skills do you know? And I always say, what skills can you learn? Why? There is no excuse that you can't learn something. Okay. Now, if you go, for example, you, um, I'm going to give an example. Let us say that, um, uh, for, for example, for me, um, I, you know, I used to do a lot of work for the, for the uh, hospitality industry. Okay. So let us say that uh, I love the hotel industries. Okay. Hotel and uh, restaurant, let us say. Okay. And then I go and find out that, uh, okay, what, do, what are they suffering 
from the most? What do they really want? Okay. Uh, some people might say, okay, maybe they want customers. All right. But I know from years on is that it is not the customers that is the problem. The problem is having repeat customers who are going to go and talk to other people about it. So the problem is not that they're lacking customers. The problem is that they don't have the ability to keep hold of those customers, which means that they don't have great service. All right? So I know that I love this industry. And everybody goes on and say, oh, we're going to teach your people customer service. We're going to teach, I mean, we're going to teach you how to get customers. But they forget that it is not the customers, it is the service. Because when the service is amazing, these people are going to come again, but they're also going to tell everybody about it. All right? Now, when I go and find this out, I'm like, okay, now I know. The industry is what? Hotel and restaurant. What is their biggest problem? Holding customers back. Why? can't they hold them back because their people don't understand the power of service then i say okay fantastic okay now i know the industry okay i know what the market wants the market wants to have repeat customers all right then i ask myself what skills do i need or no okay rather than uh, start from the fact that okay um, i need to know about this person no i have started by asking what does the market want they want to have a profitable business by having more customers coming back it's not just the customers they want they want to make sure that customers are coming back or are staying what does that mean that means that the service must be amazing all right then what do i do i say okay what do i need to learn or what skills do i have to be able to serve this to be able to help the market of hotel and restaurants to create a service situation where they have repeat customers when i can master that where these three collide then I become super, super, super dangerous. This is what you have to think about. What can I know? Because it is, you know, sometimes people are telling me, oh, coach, I don't have the skills. It is not necessarily the skills. It is, hey, do you know of certain industries that have a big problem that you can solve? If you can't solve it, you can learn to solve it. There's nothing that you can't learn these days. Okay? There's nothing that you can't learn. And it might not, you might come and say, okay, uh, maybe I don't know how to market, but I know how to teach people to do service. Okay? Now, other people might go and tell them, oh, we'll, we'll do this for you. You'll get so many customers. But they will get the customers. The customers won't come back. And then they say, oh, your thing didn't work. You know, our customers are not coming back. Probably their service is so bad that the customers are going out and giving them two-star reviews and three-star reviews. So everybody knows, oh, we can't go to that restaurant because they have what? Bad service. But I go in and say, okay, I'm not a great marketer, but I know how to teach people how to relate to other people. I know how to teach service. Now, when I teach that service, that means that the customers who are coming in are getting an amazing deal and they're getting an amazing experience. Then they're telling everybody about it. Then everybody is coming to that restaurant. Bingo. I have become dangerous at what I do. This is how you have to think about your business. The moment you decide that, you know what? It is not that I need to know everything. No. It's not about how many skills you got. It's about saying, what is their biggest problem? If you can solve the problem, bingo. Okay? So wherever you are right now, do not, you know, uh, do not be caught up in that position and say, oh my God, I don't have the skills. No. One, you can learn the skills. Number two, it depends on where you go and what you ask in the market. Okay? And this also differentiates you from everybody else. When you find the pain problem and you're able to pinpoint it and then provide a solution, Everything else goes to place. Now, I'll also give you some things that you might want to think about when it comes to this skill side of things, okay? And I am answering all these questions at the same time. I have just told you what you need to do when it comes to the skill side of things. But I want to just talk about your inability or your, your fear of saying, oh, I'm not enough. I don't have the certainty. I might not be able to do it. And I get this especially on the, on the calls when I get the calls. You know, most of the objection is, oh, my God, uh, I don't think I am good enough. Or I don't think. And I'm going to say to you, hey, I've just explained to you that you don't have to know everything. All right. Most importantly, you don't need to go and find out every problem that this market wants. No, all you got to find out is what is that one thing I can solve in that market? That one thing. Okay, and that is all you need, all right? Um, there's that story, I think it's a, a story that is told where um, a gentleman was uh, studying, uh, was studying, um, uh, a gentleman came from Nairobi, okay? Um, Nairobi is uh, a place in Kenya, and uh, whilst he was in Nairobi, he speaks Swahili as his normal language, his normal tongue. But his biggest challenge is that uh, when it came to the, uh, to the, uh, 
uh, you know, the written Swahili and all the verbs and all that stuff. He was not great at it. In fact, in school, he totally failed Swahili. But then he goes and begins, he, he decides to move from, from, uh, from Nairobi and goes and sets up uh, a business. He goes, he travels, he goes to study, but he sets up a business in China. Now, when he goes to China, he has gone at that time where the Chinese are beginning to get into tourism. They love tourism, okay? So he goes there and remember that in Kenya, Nairobi, he was failing his Swahili. All right? But he goes to China where people want to come to Kenya and enjoy the safari. Safari is, uh, you know, one of those tourist things. They want to come and enjoy. And most importantly, they want to come and enjoy it by learning some words in Swahili. What does he go and do? He goes to uh, China and he sets up a school teaching basic Swahili. And guess what? That business for him becomes amazing. Why? In this market, they have a big desire to learn what? Swahili. So that they can go and enjoy the what? The, the safari. So therefore, in China, he's big time. Why? He's teaching them how to go and communicate in Africa. He's teaching them to enjoy their what? Their safari. And that means that he's hot cake. And that is what I'm telling to you, that your skills might not be for a certain market, but guess what? When you go to a market where they desire them, then guess what? Everything else goes to the next level. Now, to just put, um, uh, uh, to just round it off, it is not about that you're not enough, Okay and or you lack certainty. I'll teach you a great way to come up with certainty, okay? First of all, I always say, become very clear about what you want in life. Any skill, just say, you know what? This is what I want to learn, okay? The next part is commit to mastering it. Okay? Why? Commitment means, you know what? I'm going to give it my best shot from now on to make sure that it happens, okay? First, I have clarity. Next, I have commitment, all right? Then begin to learn and create competence. After you become competent, you're going to have a lot of courage. You're going to have to, to grow a lot of courage to take what you've learned into the real world. And when you start to do that, naturally, you are going to become much more confident. That is how you're going to master that. No one, nobody ever, ever started off. What is the saying that we usually say? Every master was once a disaster. Every master was once a disaster. And what has that got to do with, uh, with this? You are not going to be the best at the niche initially. All you got to do is start. Okay? You have heard the story about so many of these great sports people, so many of the great people who are doing amazing things where they were told you can't do it, it's impossible, don't even bother. And then they go on to create some amazing things. Why? They said, you know what? Whatever happens, I'm going to make it happen. They were clear what they wanted. Okay, Michael Jordan. Number two, they committed to become what? Excellent. Number three, they built competence. They practiced, okay? They practiced over and over and over again, okay? Then they had the courage to say, okay, now I'm ready to go out there and compete. And that gave them the confidence. That is how you're going to get to mastering that. Okay. Now, finally, I told you about, uh, uh, we talked about the skills and all not having the product. I have just explained here to you that guess what? If you work through this and you understand that it's about what the market wants, then this stops to be an issue. But I just want to give you some pointers to say, hey, by the way, guess what? If you want to come up with a better way to serve these people, your niche, okay, there are some questions that you can think about. And in thinking about them, they will change everything for you. All right? So, first and foremost, find out if you've decided this is my niche, these are the people I'm going to serve. Ask yourself a question. What is their biggest pain point? What, what do they, what really bothers them? Okay? What keeps them awake? What is that one thing that, you know what? It is, it, it, it gives them heartburn. They, they don't sleep. They just want to find a solution to it. Okay? They, you know, it, they, it keeps them awake all night. Okay? When you do that, you say, okay, fine. I found out what my audience pains are. Next, what do they, what are they trying to accomplish? Okay? How do you know this, by the way? You go and you ask the market. You go and you ask the market. You've chosen, uh, for example, when I just started out, I used to speak to a lot of leaders. I used to speak to a lot of uh, entrepreneurs. Why? I wanted to find out what's up. Even with the restaurants, you know, people would call me and then I would go and talk to them, find out what their biggest problems are. Then I would know, okay, this is how I position myself. This is what I say. And the moment you're able 
to find out their biggest problems, their pains, and then what they're trying to accomplish. Now you're becoming super dangerous in this niche. Then the next uh, question you ask is, what are they fearful of? What are they fearful of? What is it they're fearful of? Every entrepreneur that I've spoken to, they always have some back and fear. And the, the first time you ask them, they're going to say, ah, you know what, I, you know, it's okay for me. But all of them have. Most of the guys who are, you know, above their 50s, 60s, 70s, they're most fearful of not leaving a legacy. They're most fearful of, of, of leaving it to their children and they completely lose it. They're most fearful of, of not having achieved anything beyond what they've created, okay? And I, I've always known that. So I've always used that to say, okay, by the way, we can help you to plan for the future, okay? The next one is ask yourself what frustrates them, okay? Why do you ask that question? Because then when you find a way to get rid of the frustration, again, what are you becoming? Super dangerous, Okay, next, ask yourself, what are they most afraid of? And what is their greatest desire? Now, please notice, there is a pain and there's a desire. You must get both of those. You must get both of those. When you can answer these questions by asking your market, and you have this, number one, your marketing is going to be great. All the things that you produce in terms of communication are going to be based on what the market wants. It's not guesswork. Okay, and this is what we help you to do in the work class consultants uh, course. Why? We understand that, hey, you're going to have to do this work to succeed. We want you to succeed. And, you know, we, when we make a promise of, hey, you got to do this in 50 days or less, we mean it. Why? Because we are working on all the things that are important. Okay, now you might also be wondering, okay, what else do I use this information for? Guess what? Your product. Okay, why? When you answer this, then you design a product that solves this problem. Then you become, again, I, I like to use the word dangerous. You become dangerous in this niche because guess what? You know what their problem is, okay? You've decided to choose a certain uh, group of people and you've built the skill. You have confidence right now and your product is going to be killer, all right? So there you go. The question of, hey, coach, I don't have a niche or I don't have certainty or I don't have the skills, it is all answered in this presentation right here. You have everything that you need. But I also want to tell you, again, 99% of everybody who signs up does not know their niche 110%. They have one or two or three that they are thinking about. And this is where we come in. When you come into the, the course in the first week, what are we doing? We're helping you to find what your niche is. The calls are about what? Refining what that niche is going to be. Okay? Now, on top of that, we don't just want you to get a niche that you might fail at. No, we refine it in such a way that you have the best chance to succeed. Why? We have been there. We know how long it takes. You know, uh, if, if we tell you about some of the people, you know, Jennifer and Corbus and, and Sudesh and Charity, all these guys came in without a niche, okay? And they were doing general stuff. But eventually, they find the niche and then bingo, everything goes to the next level, okay? Now, to finish this, this video, I just want to say this to you. Whatever you decide to do in everything that we do here, please know that the most important part of all this stuff is you must start. That's it. You must start. And as long as you start, everything else, you know, when you take that first step, then somehow the next step will show you, will, will, will reveal. And then the next one, okay? You just have to trust that you are on the right track, okay? You must trust that you own the right truck. You must trust the process as well. Why? It is proven to work. It is proven to work. And then most, um, the, the final one here is you must come from a heart of service. You can never, ever, ever fail on that one. You can never, ever fail. So, as I end this one today, I hope that this helps you to understand that, you know what, you, do, you can actually start and have all this refined for you in the course. And uh, like I said to you in the, in the webinar and or on the call, it is now your time to what? To take the plan and say, you know what, I'm going to start my business. So at the end of this video, at the bottom, there is a button which you need to press. Uh, I mean, just click that button and get into the course and let's get you building your your. Uh, world-class business right now because you know you have it you know inside you you're on the on the wall and you might be, have been thinking you know maybe i don't have the skill maybe i don't have this no guess what everything else can be sorted out and everything else is taught in the course remember week one is about foundations your niche your message your offer week two what do we do we get into the psychology of winning okay where this stuff comes from 
Why? Some people get in, but they don't have the right mindset. We make sure that the mindset is right for you to go and win, okay? Week three, what do we do? We say, okay, let's get into teaching you how to sell. Let's get you, you know, you've, you've gotten your, your niche sorted out. You know what their problems are. You know what you want to solve. Now, let's teach you how to sell to them and get them in and help them through, okay? Then week four, five, and six is bring everything together to get you to that level where you begin to make money in your uh, in your business and you begin to live your dream you begin to do what you have to do all right so as i finish this video hey click below get into the course and remember that uh, the the uh, the discount that we have there can only last another 48 hours after that it is gone and it's gone forever and if you come in at, an, at another date then you're gonna have to pay the big amount okay so let us do what we have to do i'll see you inside the course thank you